Krishna Vigya Swara Tene Brahma Hridaya Adivkavaye Muyantaya Tsuraya Tene Brahma Hridaya Adikavaye Muyantaya Tsuraya Tejo Varimidam Yata Vinimayo Yatra Trisargo Mursha Tejo Varimrida Jata Vinimayo Jatra Trisargo Mursha Damna Svena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi Damna Svena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param De Mahi. Oh my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. Oh my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. Oh all-pervading personality of Godhead. Oh all-pervading personality of Godhead. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because He is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because He is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Of water seen on fire and land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by reactions of the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction of the three modes of nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Which is, for, which is forever. Free from the illusory representations in the material world, which is forever free from the illusory representations in the material world. I meditate upon Him, for He is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Him, for He is the absolute truth. Dharma prajita kaitavutra. Dharma prajita kaitavutra. Paramo nirmatsaranam satam. Paramo nirmatsaranam satam. Vedyam vastava matra vastu. Vedyam vastava matra vastu. Shivadam tapa trayon mulanam. Shivadam Taputrayam Lanam Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimva Parir Ishwaraha Kimva Parir Ishwaraha Sadyo Hridi Avaruti Tetra Sadyo Rudi Avaruti Tetra Kriti Bhi Susu Subhistakshanat Kriti Bhi Susu Subhistakshanat Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated Completely rejecting all religious activities which are material motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion. The highest truth, the reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold misery. Such a truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva's maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. Is sufficient itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of that scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, as soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpataro galitam palam. Nigama kalpataro galitam palam. Sukhamakad amrita dravya samyutam. Sukhamakad amrita dravya sangitam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur aho raskabu vibhavuka. Muhur aho raskabu vibhavuka. O oh, expert and thoughtful men, relish Shrimad Bhagavatam. O oh, expert and thoughtful men, relish Shrimad Bhagavatam. Mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literature. Mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literature. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. It is from the lips of Sri Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Even though its, its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Although its nectarian juice is already relishable for all. Including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Srinvatam Swakata Krishna. Srinvatam Swakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Punya Shravana Kirtana. 
It is self-righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna. And for one who hears about Krishna. Lord Krishna who is dwelling within everyone's heart. Lord Krishna dwelling within everyone's acts heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. Acts as a best wishing friend. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. And purifies the devotee who is constantly engaged in hearing of him. Nasta preesu bhadresu. Nasta preesu bhadresu. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Bhagavati uttama sloka. In this way, the devo a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. And this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more about Krishna from Bhagavatam. And from the devotees. And from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Becomes fixed in devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Kamalova dayas chaye. Kamalova dayas chaye. Chita itar na vidam. Chita itar na vidam. Stitam sattve prasiddhi. Stitam sattve prasiddhi. By development of devotional service. By development of devotional service. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lusts and avarice are diminished. Evam prasanna manaso. Evam prasanna manaso. Bhagavat bhakti yoga taha. Bhagavat tattva vigyanam. Bhagavat tattva vigyanam. Mukta sangasya jayate. When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Chidyante sarva samsaya. Chidyante sattva samsaya. Chidyante chasya karmani. Chidyante sa... Drista evat manishwari. Drista evat manishwari. Thus bhakti yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. Thus bhakti yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. And never was to come at once to the stage of Samusha Samagrama. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee. Therefore, by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee. In Krishna consciousness. In Krishna consciousness. Can one understand the science of Krishna? Can one understand the science of Krishna? Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 1, chapter. Chapter 17, verse number 9. Masora Beyatra Sucho. Masora Vishalad Bayam. Vetute Vishalad Bayam. Marudir Amba Badramte. Marudir Amba Badrat. Dala Nam Mai Translation by Srila Prabhupada. O son of Surabi, you need, you need lament no longer now. There is no need to fear this low class sudra. And, O mother cow, as long as I am living as the ruler and subduer of all envious men, there is no cause for you to cry. Everything will be good for you. <coughs> Purport by Srila Prabhupada. Protection of bulls and cows and all other animals can be possible only when there is a state ruled by an executive head like Maharaj Pradikshit. Maharaj Pradikshit addresses the cow as mother, for he is cultured. Twice born, Kshatriya king, Surabi is the name of cows which exist in the spiritual planets and are especially reared by Lord Sri Krishna himself. 
as men are made after the form of and features of the Supreme Lord, so also the cows are made after the form and features of Surabi cows in the spiritual kingdom. In the material world, the human society gives all protection to the human being, but there's no law to protect the descendants of Surabi, who can give all protection to men by supplying the miracle food, milk. But Maharaj Parikshit and the Pandavas were fully conscious of the importance of the cow and the bull. And they were prepared to punish cow killer with all chastisement, including death. There has sometimes been agitation for the protection of the cow, but for want of pious executive heads and suitable laws, the cow and bull are not given protection. The human society should recognize the importance of the cow and bull and thus give all protection to these important animals, following in the footsteps of Maharaj Brikshit, for protecting the cows and Brahminical culture, the Lord, who is very kind to the cow and, and Brahmanas, go Brahmana Hitaya, will be pleased with us and will bestow upon us real peace. Sila Prabhupada Ki Jai. <coughs> So we see just as man is made in the image of God, so the cow is made in the image of Surabi. And also, uh, in India, we've seen uh, in those uh, parts of India where cow killing is uh, forbidden, uh, people still kidnap cows to take them to the slaughterhouse, even in those uh, parts of India. And sometimes they've been killed by pious Hindus. You read about it in the newspaper every once in a while. So what Prabhupada is saying here is not uh, strange. He says, there has sometimes been agitation for the protection of the cow, but for one of pious executive heads and suitable laws, the cow and the bull are not given protection. However, sometimes there has been recently in India uh, people who have killed those p persons who were caught uh, stealing cows in order to take them to the uh, slaughterhouse. In fact, even in Vrindavan, I remember one time I was leaving Vrindavan in a taxi and the taxi that I pointed to a car, to a uh, one of the small trucks in India and <coughs> he told me there's some cow in there and he said those are Muslims taking a cow to a slaughterhouse. Yeah. So it's not an uncommon thing. And it's not only Muslims that do it. The Hindus do it also. They take cows to the slaughterhouse because they can make some money. And they you know, they'll pick up those cows that have been abandoned. <coughs> Unfortunately, what happens in India is that uh, usually poor farmers, or even if they're not poor, when a cow no longer gives milk, they just let it go. And it just walks around the village and tries to eat something. Usually they end up eating trash Oftentimes, they eat some plastic bag and uh, that messes up their whole intestinal tract and, and they die. So if, if the government was really interested in helping uh, the cows, uh, they would fund uh, individuals, and there are a bunch of them now, who collect those cows that are abandoned and protect them. And all over India now, there are Goshalas that pick up those cows that are abandoned and take care of them until they die. So the government should, I, mean, I don't know if they are now or not, but they should, they should fund those people who are willing to do that. There's one man in India, he's got about, uh, I'd, I'd say 5,000 cows, but he doesn't have any land. What he does is he keeps moving them to different uh, parts of India, uh, not by trucks, but just by walking. And 
they help out farmers. Uh, he'll let the cows graze on the farmer's land and poop all over the place. And that fertilizes the land. <laughs> so he's welcome. He's not, you know, he's not, uh, he's not a nuisance. He's welcomed by the farmers. And he plans it in such a way that he gets there when they need it. Right. Have you seen videos of that? Yeah. No? Uh, he's got thousands of cows. And, you know, it's not easy to do what he's doing because, you know, all those cows have to drink water and they have to poop and they have to eat. Right, so he's got to plan it just right so that uh, they're not a nuisance because, you know, if the cows go into somebody's land that has crops and eats all the crops, you know, it's, it's, it's a disaster. So he's a very smart man, very, very smart man. They chased them away. Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. Just like cows, the other, like they also go and sheep also they also go from one place to another place. And oh, okay. They, yeah. They welcome them. Yeah, they welcome too because they're natural fertilizers. So they, yeah. They will stay there on the farms for months or so. Yeah, India is an interesting place. <laughs> Very interesting <laughs> place. Yeah. Also in this purport, we say that. Uh, how basically almost all the leaders in the world are ignorant. They don't realize the value of the cow and the bull. And because of that, they have a lot of trouble in their kingdoms. I mean, a lot of places, uh, like for example, in Muslim countries and uh, even in countries that are not Muslim but have large Muslim uh, population, uh, you have people who, let's say in uh, Id al Futr, if, right after Ramadan, they slaughter a huge number of animals, including cows. In fact, uh, uh, Runti Dave is not here. He was he was working in this one company, and there was a uh, a uh, Asian lady, she wasn't Indian, she was Asian, some type of maybe Vietnamese. And he's, he was talking to her every once in a while, telling her about the value of vegetarianism. And she would listen to him. And uh, she respected him because he was a, you know, a religious guy. And, uh, but then uh, Ramadan came, and when it ended, one of the Muslim employees came up to the Vietnamese later and told her how wonderful Islam is and how wonderful it is to fast during Ramadan. And now, after Ramadan, they have a big, big celebration. And uh, this year in Seattle, they killed over 10,000 uh, goats and cows and other things. And it was wonderful. Allah was so pleased. So next time she saw Ranti Dev, she said, I'm very confused. I'm very confused. He said, what's, what's the matter with you? He said, you say don't eat any meat, and Muslim men say the more animals we kill, Allah is pleased. <laughs> <laughs> so so he, she said, I don't, I don't understand anything now. <laughs> so, you know, it's very confusing, right? But it's not only Muslims that do it. If you go to Calcutta, uh, during Durga Puja, there's blood all over the streets. They, 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 they slaughter thousands of animals. I don't know if they do kill cows, but they're definitely slaughtering a lot of sheep uh, celebrating uh, Durga Puja. So that's why Prabhupada said there's not much difference between the Muslims and the Hindus, or at least the fallen Hindus in modern times. So people don't understand the value of the, of the cow and the, and the bull and because of that, there's a lot of tragedy in society. So Prabhupada says, protection of bulls and cows and all other animals can be possible only when there is a state ruled by an executive head like Maharaj Pariksit. Maharaj Pariksit addresses the cow as mother, for he is cultured, twice born, Kshatriya king. 
Surabi is the name of the cows which exist in the spiritual planets and are especially reared by Lord Shri Krishna himself. As men are made after the form and features of the Supreme Lord, so also the cows are made after the form and features of the Surabi cows in the spiritual kingdom. Well, if you see those pictures, they're usually white cows with the hump. That, at least that's the way they're portrayed often in uh, uh, the paintings of, uh, of Goloka Vrindavan. So we have uh, cows like that, right? We have the, the gear cows, which have the hump. Some of them are white. We have two that are white. We have actually three that are white. And uh, some of them are darker, like uh, brownish red. And they're wonderful cows. So therefore, protecting the cows and getting what's called the miracle food, milk. Ooh, I said a nasty word. The veg vegans don't like that word, milk. <laughs> you know, they say it's very bad to drink milk. It's not meant for human beings. Now you see how stupid people are. In fact, this one lady came to the farm with her daughter, and she wanted to show her daughter the cows. And then as we were walking around and feeding the cows, the mother said, you know, my daughter is a vegan. I said, really? Yeah, she doesn't want to drink any milk. And I looked at the daughter, and the daughter was smiling, had a big smile. I, I said, well, that's really ignorant. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is ignorant. You know. Of course, I can understand not wanting to drink milk of cows that are exploited industrially. But why not drink cows from, milk from cows that are not exploited industrially and who are happy and gladly give the milk, and there's plenty of milk for their uh, ca uh, calves also. So you see in Kali Yuga, one time I was with Prabhupada, and he said, in Kali Yuga, everyone sees things uh, backwards. And he, made a, he made a face, you know, the, uh, of, of disgust. So they, they see everything backwards, you know. So we need to uh, culture people by explaining things. Now, when you explain to someone, you know, uh, people are suffering a lot because they're killing cows and eating them, they'll just laugh. They'll say, what are we talking about? It's nonsense, right? But it's not nonsense. If you had told me that when I was 16 years old, I would have laughed, definitely. But people can be educated, uh, and especially look at the incidence of colon cancer. Right. A lot of people get colon cancer. Like the number one killer is, of course, heart, heart attacks. And number two killer is cancer. And amongst the cancers, colon cancer is one of the most prominent ones. So, and, and actually, it's a horrible thing to get a, uh, uh, to get a uh, colon cancer uh, test. Do you, know, do you know how they do that? Huh? Yeah. You know? How do they do it? They pass something from the anus. No, they, they stick something. They, the, the doctor sticks his finger up your anus. Yeah. Right? It's very, very embarrassing. Right? And uh, something like that, right? Yeah, you, I mean, you work in a hospital, you know. <laughs> so, why? Because uh, people are eating uh things that they can't digest. Mm -hmm. uh, the human body is not really made for digesting meat because the human intestine is too long. It's 25 to 30 feet long. It's all pa impact right in the abdominal area. Whereas if you look at the intestine of a, of a tiger or a, or a lion, it's very short. It's not 25, 30 feet long. But if you look at the human intestine, from the beginning to the end, it is almost 30 feet long, 27 feet long. And when that meat travels through that whole intestine and it takes time, it, it putrefies. And therefore, people have bad smells, people have constipation, people have, uh, uh, they're, they're, they get uric acid in the blood, and because of that, uh, the blood system, it, it attacks the blood veins and 
and uh, destroys their elasticity. So blood veins are very elastic. They can get bigger and smaller like that. But when they get attacked by the acid, the uric acid, it, it affects them. The collin, collagen network becomes impaired and therefore they lose that elect electricity, electric elect elasticity and then uh, you end up getting high blood pressure and eventually cardiac disease. And, and many things happen because of the uric acid. So if you describe these things to people, they, you know, they hear it, but it, it doesn't really connect, right? Why? Because they're lusty for the taste of meat. Now, what is the taste of meat? The taste of meat. Like, I'm an expert in meat because I was a meat cutter. And we, had a, we had a grocery store, and I was trained, in the, unfortunately. Uh, so uh, real tasty, so-called tasty meat is meat that is marbled with fat. So that's not cow meat. Cow meat is very tough. They have to use tenderizers in it, all types of things to make it palatable. But steer meat is very tasty for the carmies because it has fat in it. When I say marbled, it's in the flesh itself. And uh, whereas in the cow, you don't have that. So uh, Prabhupada has explained in some lectures that uh, the real taste of meat is ghee. So when you cook uh, uh, paneer in ghee, you get the taste of meat. So one time I, I cooked a feast for these meat eaters and I made uh, fresh paneer in front of them and then I uh, uh, pan fried it in ghee, right? And I put it in a tomato sauce, right? And it was very funny. Uh, the host, uh, you know, wanted me to make a vegetarian meal, so I made it. So after a few prayers and things, there was a priest there, so he said some prayers, and then I said some prayers. So when we were ready to eat, and I, had, I put out a whole feast, you know, Hare Krishna feast, right? Everything nicely decorated and so forth. As soon as we were ready to eat, the host puts his hand underneath the table and pulls out a chicken leg. <laughs> and, it, and the chicken leg was gray. In other words, it had oxidized. It was an old, old piece of chicken. Leg. And he puts it on the table, right? And uh, he said, who wants some chicken? You know, it was like horrible. It's crazy, right? Anyway, during the course of the meal, there was another big meat eater. And he started eating the uh, paneer and the tomato sauce, right? And he told his wife, hey, he said, you better eat this. This is really good. <laughs> because he got the taste. Because it was cooked in ghee. Right? He got the taste. So Prabhupada says the real taste of the meat is not the meat itself. If you eat cow meat, there's no taste to it. But it's the ghee that's in the, in, in the, in the flesh that gives the taste. So anyway, uh, we can wean people off meat by making very tasty uh, paneer subjis. You know. And once they get the, the right taste, then uh, they realize they don't need to eat meat. You know. In fact, we're going to this uh, Asian Pacific Community Center in Tacoma. Now we're gonna go twice a month. And we went one time and they they went crazy over the food. They were all meat eaters, big, heavy-duty uh, Samoans and Chungans and their diff different islands in the South Pacific. They're very nice people. But they're, I mean, they're, their national food is uh, barbecued pig. They'll take a whole pig and barbecue it, and they'll eat it, and it's horrible. But these people went crazy over the prasadam. I was, like, shocked. In fact, one lady called me up. It was a Vietnamese lady. She said that, when you come again, when you come again to Asian Pacific? I said, well, when they invite us. Said, oh, oh, I eat your food. It was so good. <laughs> so I never eat food like that before. <laughs> I said, okay, well, you go talk to them, and we'll come back again. So 
uh, and she must have because they wanted they want us to come back now. So you see, if you make things nicely, offer it respectfully to people, and be friendly with them, eventually they realize, wait a minute, there's another way of living. There's another way of eating. There's another way of of doing things, and that then. And then they're all interested in the health because they all have health problems. I mean, the, the lady that invited us there that runs the place, she has huge health problems because she's like 300 pounds and, you know, she's full of, uh, full of pig. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I told her, I, I, I told her I wrote a, a booklet, uh, Five Steps to Optimal Health. I want to read that. <laughs> so, uh, we have to be proactive and understand that people are suffering terribly out there. And uh, they need prashadam and they need knowledge. So those are some points I wanted to make today. I had a lot of other points I was going to make, but I'll, I'll stop right there. Are there any uh, questions? There was one thing I did want to talk about. I'm going to, I'm going to mention it because this is an amazing point that Prabhupada makes and it's something that we don't even understand ourselves. And that is, Prabhupada says, the first le lesson in spiritual life is we are not this body, but eternal spirit souls. Okay, now we've heard that many times, right? But now you're going to hear something that fills in all the cracks that you probably have never heard before or you might have heard it but it, it might not have uh, 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 struck you so uh, starkly and, and uh, as, as, as hearing this direct explanation by Prabhupada. He said once you were a child now you are a grown man or woman where is your childhood body? That body does not exist but you still exist because you are eternal. The circumstantial body has changed, but you have not changed. This is proof of eternality. Now, when I heard that the first time, when I read that, I didn't understand what he, how, how that could be the proof of eternality, right? Now, just hear this. You remember that you did certain things yesterday and certain things today, but you forget other things. Your body of yesterday is not today's body. Now, that's the point. That is the point. The body is actually changing every second. This is something we don't understand. And Prabhupada made this, makes this point. He says, but you forget uh, your body of yesterday is not today's body. Do you admit it or not? You cannot say that today is the 13th of May, 1973. At that, when he was speaking, that was yesterday, right? You cannot say that today is yesterday. The 13th was yesterday. The day has changed, but you remember yesterday. And that remembrance is evidence of your internality. The body has changed but you remember it. Therefore, you are eternal, although the body is temporary. This proof is very simple. Even a child can understand it. It is, is it difficult to understand? So here's what he's saying. When he says the body changes every day, actually every, he said actually every second it changes. Now, what is the proof that that's true? Well, the proof is that in one second, your body produces 180, uh, uh, three, three million red blood corpuscles. And in uh, one day, that equals 180 billion blood corpuscles. Every second, your body is producing three million blood corpuscles. Did you know that? Look it up. You're going to be surprised. You see, and, and because of that, 
in uh, in one one second your body changes in the body you have approximately up to 300 billion blood corpuscles 300 billion but in one day you produce 180 billion so from one day to another you're actually changing your body and imagine over time what happens so therefore Prabhupada is saying that when a day goes by you remember some things you did the previous day not everything but you remember some things so Prabhupada says the eternality of the soul is a simple fact I am eternal soul my body is changing, but I am not changing. For example, I am now an old man. Sometimes I think, oh, I used to jump and play, but now I cannot jump because my body has changed. I want to jump, but I cannot do it. That jumping propensity is eternal, but because of my old body, I cannot do. <clears throat> Two to three million every second. Huh? Two to three million. Every second. Every second. Yeah. You see? A day. a day, right. Did you know that? Right. 200 billion a day. Does it say 200 billion a day? 2 billion, yeah. 200 billion red, uh, red blood cells every day. Okay. So I got it a little wrong there. I said 180. Oh, no, it's, it's correct. I said 180 billion. 180 yes. 200. Yeah. So uh, he, we don't realize what this body can do, what it's actually doing. You see, there, there, you don't even have to study, you know, the, the universe. You just study your body and you'll be amazed what your body is doing. And because of that, everything is changing very rapidly for us. But we don't notice it so, so much. And, the earth is moving. huh? So the earth is moving so fast, we don't know. Yeah, we don't, we don't understand <laughs> that we, we can do such amazing things, you know. And by the way, no scientist as of yet, has ever been able to uh, artificially produce a red blood cell. There are, there are 200 different type of uh, cells in the body, right? And as far as blood goes, there's at least five to ten different things in it. But no one has ever been able... If you, if you could make artificial blood, you would be the richest person in the world. You see... That's why you know they always say, "Give blood, give blood," you know, right? We, they can't they can't make it. There's a secret to it. There's a, there's a mystery about it. Although they know what's in it, but they still can't reproduce it. Is it? But your body is producing two billion uh, a day, uh, two hundred billion a day. Right? One seventy three to two fifty nine. That's the range. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so let's say two, two bil 200 billion a day. So, therefore, the body is changing, and because it's changing, but because you can remember what you did, a few things that you did yesterday, that means you're eternal. This is Prabhupada's argument. So we'll talk about this some more. There's a lot more to say about it, Prabhupada says. Ogor is the Srila Prabhupada ki Every day we find out